welcome to train with shubham channel and in today's video we will be talking about a three tier application architecture diagram on aws cloud now this is a very important video because this kind of questions are asked to you in a devops interview they ask you have you worked on a three tier application before have you created a three tier application architecture on aws cloud do you know aws services so in today's video we will be capturing each and everything from theory from architecture to an actual implementation on the aws cloud architecture we will be drawing everything so let's get started now what is a three tier application a three tier application or a multi tier application generally has three different tiers or three different layers as presentation layer business layer and a database layer now what is presentation layer you must have visited aws or amazon.com now you must have seen all those items on amazon.com the items which you see the web page which you or the user end user sees it's called the presentation layer generally the presentation layer has a aws service called cloud front now cloud front delivers all the web pages all the content images to the end user now what is the business layer whenever you add to cart or you add or you buy any item on aws or amazon.com i don't know why i'm saying aws but whenever you buy something on amazon.com the computation of cost of the computation of the items everything the logic happens in the business or the logic layer for that you need ec2 or ecs or any kind of compute services so ec2 ecs these basically are captured under the business or logic layer now this data needs to be stored somewhere right where do we store it we store it in rds or the database layer it can have rds as mysql postgres anything so database layer will generally have services like rds business logic layer will have services like ec2 ecs and your presentation layer will generally have services like cloud front okay and things like that s3 okay something like that now in order to draw this on aws cloud we need a canvas so generally whenever you go to a interview you are asked to draw this kind of architecture diagram so let's go and draw this now we will be drawing this and we would be needing some kind of service okay now you have to make everything on aws cloud so just create a figure of aws cloud okay so this is your aws cloud generally you have an option to use any of the cloud services be it azure aws gcp it's up to you i have chosen aws cloud now inside aws cloud there are tons of services there are tons of applications running how will you create a private cloud for your own application for that we need a service known as vpc or virtual private cloud so i'll just create a vpc here okay so this is my vpc how will i create a vpc so vpc so this is my vpc okay or my virtual private cloud okay so this is my vpc i can call it vpc okay now what is the role of vpc vpc allows an isolation for your entire application so which means the presentation layer business layer database layer all of these layer will come inside this vpc so i'll just create a presentation layer uh i'll just expand this aws cloud a bit your vpc can also be expanded okay easy looks neat so now that you have your presentation business and database layer in place you need to have availability zones what is the availability zone availability zone means your application would be available or all those services which you need would be available in that particular zone so availability zones generally come inside a region so you will have a region here okay let's say you have a region called us east 1 okay 
and it has an availability zone you can keep this as az okay it's fine you can keep it for example for this particular example we can keep it a single availability zone not to keep at as a multiple az okay so now that we have our presentation business and database layer in place so we can keep this inside a vpc and that vpc generally comes inside a region and inside that region we have availability zones now let's understand if I am a user and I am accessing this VPC. How will I access it? So for example, I need a user. So I have a user in place. Okay. Hi user. Now that user will have a laptop. Okay, fine. It will have a laptop and this laptop will make a request of, let's say trainwithshubham.com. Okay. I am making a request from this user to this laptop. And now this laptop will be accessing our application, which is inside this VPC. How will the internet route? So that's why we need a route 53. Route 53 is the service which is there in your AWS cloud. And this will allow your application to be accessible by the outside world. Okay. Using route 53. Now your route 53 knows which VPC to point out, but there is a small catch. VPC is private cloud and the request that is coming from the outside world is a public request. So you need a gateway for that. So I'll create an internet gateway. Okay. Internet gateway, which will basically allow your route 53 to connect to your VPC. And this is how the connection to VPC is done. Okay. You can see the route 53 is now able to connect to your VPC. Now let's understand once the VPC uh, has the action, we will start with our application. The presentation layer, as we mentioned, will have cloud front. Okay. Cloud front where all the UI and all the images will be there and this cloud front and your uh, business layer basically should be in a small internet or you can also call it subnet. So let's try to understand what are subnets. So subnets are of two types, public subnet and private subnet. Private subnet or any kind of subnet goes inside your VPC. Imagine like a big box. That big box is your virtual private cloud. Inside this, you have small, small mini internet zones inside this if you want to give public access to someone so you can keep it as a public subnet okay you can keep it as a public subnet why because you need the public access to these things presentation layer and uh, business layer but do you need the database access for the entire public no so that's why you have to create this database inside a private subnet. So database will come inside the private subnet. Now the point of having public and private subnet is just the security point of view. You will be restricting your security from public to private. Let's say you have a database. You don't want to give it the public access. Just put it inside the private subnet. Now, once your application has the access to CloudFront, CloudFront will then make API calls for computation. So that's why you need a compute engine. So you can have ECS or EC2, whatever you need. Let's say I have EC2. Now there won't be one instance of EC2, right? There will be many instances of EC2. Okay. How will you make sure that the load is properly distributed amongst these instances? For that, we need elastic load balancer. Okay. This load balancer will sit inside the business layer and it will distribute the load which is coming from the cloud front. Let's say the load is coming from cloud front. Now this or elastic load balancer will distribute the load into different EC2 instances based on the availability of them. Okay. You okay. can see how your diagram is looking. User will go to laptop. They will then route 53, go to VPC, go to presentation layer do some computation. Now, once you have to access the database that we need a database, so we'll keep RDS. 
okay rds is in place now again rds can have multiple instances for that again you will need a load balancer now this load balancer again will distribute the load amongst the instances okay i am able to distribute it awesome now how will my business layer and my database layer communicate because they are in different subnets right business layer is in public subnet and database layer is in private subnet how will they communicate they will communicate using a network address translation or a nat gateway so nat gateway will be required here so that whatever traffic is coming from the business layer or the private subnet it is translated accordingly to your private subnet now this traffic will be routed to your load balancer and that will complete our entire architecture for a three tier application you can see right how your entire application looks like let's say someone says trainvishubham.com so you have route 53 to go to the particular vpc you have internet gateway to route it to uh, the internet side to access into the subnets you have presentation layer of cloudfront you have business layer of ec2 instances with a load balancer you have a private subnet where you have database instances again it is distributed by a load balancer and this way you can have an entire three tier application now an interesting question if the interviewer asks you how will you improve the security you can also say that for every access i can have iam roles attached so i can have iam roles for you know access for these business layer instances i can have iam roles for databases and i can have iam roles even for your vpcs so this way you can have one more layer of security now they say i don't want the security only from iam side i want the security from the routing side as well then you can also add web application firewall or waf so you can go and add waf i'll just go here now waf sits in between your vpc and your route 53 so this route which we have will go through WAF first or web application firewall and then the web application firewall will go to your internet gateway. So this way you can have your entire you know three tier architecture on AWS cloud. You can also have uh, you know side by side view where you can tell your interviewer saying that hey this is the theory whatever services I have used and this is the you know diagrammatic representation of the services for this three tier application so i hope you understood the entire three tier architecture do let me know in the comments if you want a practical implementation of the same so this is a diagrammatic implementation if you want a practical implementation do let me know in the comments i wish you all the best for your next interview do shine and give your 100 percent so thank you so much for watching till here if you like the video do give this a video a thumbs up and do let me know your thoughts in the comments thank you so much for watching keep watching train vishabham channel